I'm amazed by how many men choose to stay at work full time after 60 when they don't really need to. And in this video I'm just going to unpack some reasons why I think they're making a very big mistake. Welcome back to my channel, it's Friday morning. If you've visited my channel before, you'll know that Friday mornings are the days when I take Uncle Archie to Tesco's for his weekly shuffle around, getting his weekly shopping, and I get the opportunity to go down onto the Knavesmire at York, kill an hour of time and record these videos. So today I wanted to have a chat with you guys about work and the part it should play after you've turned 60. One of my favourite books is by a lady called Bronnie Ware and Bronnie is a palliative care nurse who looks after people at the end of life and she has five regrets. I won't go through them all here but the one that I want to point out to you is that the second one, the biggest regret, second biggest regret is I wish I hadn't worked so hard. And what Bronnie says in her book is that that particular regret is very common among men and hardly there at all for women. And what do men regret about that? Well, they regret that they worked when they didn't really need to. And what they ended up doing was they ended up missing the companionship of their partners and they ended up missing their children's growing up years and I just think that is so sad and so disappointing when it doesn't actually need to be the case. Now here's the thing, I do understand the feelings about this because work is a fairly complex topic. For many people it gives them a sense of identity if they're not doing that thing that they've been doing since they were, I guess, early 20s, then what are they? You know, they go into a bar, they meet people, they have a chat, and that person says, hey, what do you do? And they say, oh, I'm a recruitment consultant. That would be me. Or I'm an accountant. Or I'm a solicitor. Something like that. It defines you. It's who you are. So when you stop working and you're not doing that thing anymore that defines you, well, what do you say? Who are you? I'm an ex-recruitment consultant or I'm an ex-accountant or I'm an ex-lawyer. And there, therein lies one of the difficulties, that sense of identity that work gives you. The second thing that a lot of people experience with work, and I know I certainly did, it gave me a sense of purpose. I got out of bed because of work. It drove everything that I did. It was behind everything. It was the foundation for my life. I needed that purpose. I really did. And when I left work, uh, quit my job at 44 to go into retirement, or in reality, probably what I considered to be a break at the time, but which eventually became retirement, yeah, I lost a sense of purpose. I completely lost my direction. And I guess that can be scary for people. A lot of people think that the easiest way to avoid that is just keep working. That way you'll still have your sense of purpose. And yeah, I get that. The third thing that work obviously gives you is it gives you human connection. You hang out with a lot of people in work. At least I, certain, I certainly did. I mean, I. I had clients, I had candidates, I had my employees, I had uh, my competitors who I actually hung out with, I made friends with people within that whole sector. And once that's gone, it's not as easy to hang out with people. You have to make a real effort to build a new social circle. And that scares people. But here's the thing, I think those things are fairly straightforward to overcome if you just apply yourself. And I think the sacrifices that men make, or at least some men make, to stay at work just don't justify staying at work. I mean, why would you miss 
your children's growing up years, those really fantastic years from, I guess, four maybe through to about nine or ten, something like that, when your children really love you and they want you and they want to spend time with you, why would you want to spend time at work hanging out with your work colleagues rather than spending time with your kids? The one thing that I gained from finishing work at 44 is I got to spend a lot of time with my son and I don't think I would have spent that time with him if I'd have carried on working till I was well into my 50s or even 60s because I won't lie I was a bit of a workaholic and I think that would have continued. If you've watched my other videos you'll know that it was a knee-jerk reaction to my father passing away. Um, I had a life-changing event which forced me to uh, re-evaluate all my options and, and I decided to quit work. Uh, I know we don't all have those life-changing events but that's what did it for me. So yeah, those are just a few, a few thoughts about, uh, about work and the sacrifices you make. Um, I guess the other thing that I just don't get, having lost my father when I was 44, is that I don't get why anybody would want to carry on working long hours if they didn't need to and not see their parents when their parents are, are getting older. My wife, her parents are into their 80s now, well into her, their 80s, and I encourage her to spend as much time with her parents as she possibly can, because I'm well aware that by the time they get, they're getting into their mid-80s, they're, they're probably not going to be around for much longer. I mean, they might be, they might be good for another 10 or 15 years, who knows, but uh, there's a good chance that they won't. As I said, I lost my dad when I was 44, my mum lived on for about 12, 13 years after him and uh, she wasn't in a good place. She had a, a pretty b bad 12 or 13 years, even though she had a family. The effect of my father dying, you know, she was consumed with grief and she never got over it. So I, I kind of feel as though when my father died, I probably lost two parents in reality. So I'll ask you this question, why? Why would you sacrifice time with your kids? Why would you sacrifice time with your parents just to stay at the grindstone, just to stay on the hamster wheel? Now I know you're gonna comment and some of you are gonna give me a hard time about this and say that you can't retire, you can't afford to retire. I sympathize with you, I really do. But the people I'm talking to here are those that know they couldn't retire, even if they have to maybe cut their cloth a little bit accordingly cut their expenses a little bit they know they've got the ability to retire but they're not doing it i'm talking to you have a think what are you really achieving with that anyway thanks very much for watching it's come to the end of this particular video uh, i'm going to be nipping off now to pick up uncle archie and uh, i'll see you in the next video Right then, Archie. How are you getting on? Did you get everything? Yes. Excellent. This is you on camera. No. Yeah, you, yeah. You jump in there, and I'll put your. Uh, I'll put your stuff in the uh, in the boat. I didn't know you had one of them outside. Yeah. Let's get you home in this uh, mini convertible. Right, mind your, mind your elbows. Go on, then. Right, we're ready to go. All ready to go, yeah? Yes. Excellent.